how's everyone feeling? Great. Sweet, sweet. All right, great, I love it, cool. So I got a question for you guys. Have you ever chased a goal and put everything you had into achieving that goal before? I know I have. In fact, I've done it many times from completing triathlons with no experience in swimming, running, cycling, any of that type of stuff, to building a million dollar business while working less than four hours a day, creating a podcast media network where I had the opportunity to interview Super Bowl champions and the who's who of Silicon Valley. I did all of these things and even wrote three books in less than a year. And you, thank you, thank you. But you think, I don't say that to brag, I say that to really show my true colors, if you will, and my vulnerability, because that point in time, I was actually named to Silicon Valley's 40 under 40 list at just 31 years old. But what I didn't expect was to go through a numbing depression. And what really happened was I realized after doing the deep spiritual work, the deep inner work these past few years, I was chasing goals over goals to only feel more empty. And what I was really seeking was not only external validation, but dopamine hits. After we achieve a goal, we feel really good about ourselves, other people see us, and there comes in the external validation, and then you go back to your normal life. And that's when it really hit, and the rock bottom. And as we all know right now, we have a mental health crisis. Suicide rates, not to really bring a damper to this party, but we're being real. This is about self-care, right? Suicide rates have been an all-time high, and that's before the pandemic. Since the pandemic, the rates have even been going higher, so much so that in July of this year, there's going to be a phone number that you can call just like 911. It's going to be 988, where if you're feeling any sort of depression or, God forbid, taking your own life, you can call 988. Now, I don't know about you guys, but our children are growing up in a world where they're going to be knowing about 988 if they can take their own life. I don't want to live in a world like that. I don't want to live in a world where we need to have the numbers 911 in case of emergency. And the problem, I'm not saying it's work-life balance, but work-life balance is an illusion. And I'll tell you why. I'm here to speak about soul life balance. And work-life balance will start with looking at the energies of yin and yang, or yang, either way that you would like to pronounce it, really. But the yang energy is about fire. It's about structure. It's about doing and achieving. If we look at work, that's what work is, right? There's deadlines, there's projects, there's meetings, all these things that we need to do. Well, in our life, outside of work, we have obligations, maybe it's taking care of our pets, maybe it's taking care of our children, or taking care of ourselves, I hope. Going to the doctor, maybe working out, all these things that we're doing, where's the time for our soul? Where's the time to go within? So the soul, represents the yin energy and the yin archetypal energy of yin is being fluid it's flexibility it's intuition it's going within and slowing down so in the reframe of work-life balance to soul life balance we realize that work is a part of the human experience it's a part of living and first and foremost we're putting a prioritization to our soul and very much like when you go on an airplane and there's the oxygen mask, you put your oxygen mask on first, fill your cup up first, then you help others. That's what soul life balance is about. We're putting ourselves first and foremost. Now, I don't have a lot of time to go into everything and I do have a book in the back over there called Soul Life Balance and I have a podcast called Soul Seeker as well where we really go in depth in this, but we have just a little bit of time to talk about a couple practices. So I'm glad that uh, we got to experience some neuroscience games because I love neuroscience and we'll speak about that in a bit. But before we do, I want to talk about quantum physics. So quantum physics teaches us that the outer world we experience with our five senses is a reflection of our inner world. So there's been this whole narrative of let me show up this way, let me do that, let me do that, and the maybe grandiose dreams to make a massive change in the world. But the question I have for you is, just maybe it's enough to just go 
within. If it's true that our inner world reflects outwardly, then maybe we don't need to go out and try to fulfill these, all these hard pressures in our life and everything else. And I want to share a quick story. Everyone uh, familiar with Carl Jung here? Famous uh, psychologist, philosopher, amazing man. Now, I'm going to paraphrase this story. It's not my story. Um, it's almost like a game of telephone because my understanding of the Rainmaker story is that Carl Jung's colleague went to a village and the village was out of order. And you know, I can't help but look around here and look at everything thriving and think about that village when I look at this beautiful venue here. That village that Carl Jung's colleague went to, crops were dying, the people were getting sick. And so they called in the Rainmaker. And when the Rainmaker got there, he isolated himself in a hut. He was in that hut for several days. Then one day, it started raining. So the rainmaker came out of the hut and everyone's excited because the crops are growing again and they're starting to feel that prana life force energy and being fulfilled. So they asked the rainmaker, what did you do? And the rainmaker simply and calmly responded, when I arrived, the land was out of order. Thus, I became out of order. So I needed to isolate myself to get myself back in order. And by doing so, the land got in order, the crops started growing again, and the people became healthy again. And I tell that story because it's easy to say like, oh, quantum physics teaches us that the outer world that we experience is a, a reflection of the inner world. And that's very esoteric, right? Like that's hard to really wrap your head around. So a story like that is such a prime example of the magic and abundance that we have in this life, but through it being in this limited state, we've lost some of that. So by going within and slowing down, we become more aware moment to moment. Now, I'll close with just a short guided visualization. So if you feel comfortable in closing your eyes, I'd like to invite you to close your eyes, but feel free as well to keep your eyes open. And wherever you're at, just get a little bit more comfortable Melt in that chair. I know there's been a lot of movement. As you do so, start to watch the breath. We're not making any changes to the natural rhythm and cadence of the breath. We're simply just watching it. And as you do so, you might notice some stories, beliefs, emotions coming to the surface. And the invitation is to meet those stories, those beliefs, those thoughts. Oftentimes in meditation, we talk about noting, which is a form of seeing them, then moving on, not really giving them the time of day. Well, what I'm teaching you guys here today is known as internal family systems, IFS. It's parts work. The truth is we all have voices in our head. We've been told that we're different because we have voices in our head, but we all have them. And they just want to be seen witnessed and heard. And at any point in our life, in our day today, we can slow down, close our eyes, and connect with what wants to be there. And by doing so, we become the king or queen of our queendom or kingdom, if you will, in our mind. And we connect with all these different parts. We hear them out, we let them be witnessed, because if we don't, they're going to just keep coming back and back and those whispers turn to screams, then they turn to yells, then they manifest in 3D of maybe accidents trying to get your attention. So it's as simple as slowing down with a practice like this to connect within. Now neuroscience teaches us that we have 70,000 thoughts a day and 80% of those thoughts are from the day before. The real kicker is that 90% of those thoughts are negative. And that is why it is so important and crucial for us to slow down, listen to these voices, and let them be heard. Finding an exhale, we'll inhale from the bottom of the belly, letting the belly expand like a balloon all the way up to your chest. Sipping in a bit more air when you get there. Hold. 
exhaling, letting the shoulders soften, belly to the spine, all the way down. Once more, inhaling, letting it be the biggest breath of today, letting the belly expand like a balloon all the way up to the chest. Sipping in a bit more air and a bit more hold and exhaling. Letting your breath return to its natural state and your own time when you're ready, starting to flicker your eyes open. I wanna thank you guys so much for being here, for showing up for yourselves, for your community, for your relationships in the outer world. If I can leave you with one thing about soul life balance, it's that the outer world that we experience with our five senses is a reflection of the inner world. So whether it's something that I talked about here in this brief little talk, something you experience through all these amazing people that have been on the stage and are wonderful people in the back doing healing work, if you can just find one thing to feed your soul moment to moment, because it's not enough to feed your soul once a day. We need to call in awareness moment to mo moment. My name's Sam Kabert. My book is Soul Life Balance. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.